Passionate Crafter on Instagram and YouTube, and this is my first floss tube, so thank you for stopping by. Uh, today is January 5th. This is actually my second attempt at filming this. I tried filming on New Year's Day to be like a whole, like, you know, New Year resolutions and all that fun stuff, but um, the camera I use at the time does not play nicely with my computer. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, figuring things out as we go with this. Oh, and here's my kitty cat. Hello, buddy. Mostly like location and equipment. You know, it's a learning curve. But if you wait for things to be perfect, sometimes you just never start. Come, come, come say hi. Come say hi. This is my cat, Orfeo. Hi, buddy. Hi. Okay, you go sleep somewhere. You go sleep. Because, of course, I have a cat. I have two, actually. But he's the, he's the helpful one. <laughs> um, so, a little bit about me. My name's Michelle. I have been cross-stitching more or less for five years. Four years. Four years. I got my first cross-stitch cross kit on Christmas five years ago, but I only started in January. Um, so I should not have done that one. And I do a bunch of other crafts, but cross-stitch has been, since the end of 2020, been like the biggest focus. And it's been kind of like an ADHD fixation for the last two years, so it's sticking around. It's been very good for me, so I'm leveling up my game and actually putting myself out there socially, which is new and scary. <laughs> Um, so about me is, like I said, my name's Michelle, I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, so that's why I went with Chinook Crafter, because we live in an area where we get the Chinooks, which is a weather phenomenon, which I thought was interesting, and alliteration. I am 30 years old, I have a toddler, and I'm actually 37 weeks pregnant with our second baby, so we'll see when the next video comes up, <laughs> if ever. No, it will. Oh, buddy, 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 buddy. Why do we have cat helpers? <laughs> okay, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. God. Um. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna be on mat leave for a year, and I thought it was a good time because I will have support from my parents and more time to focus on these things. Because, uh, as we found out with my first mat leave, finding the time to just make that half hour a day, hour or so for my own hobbies is very good for my mental health. And it's important, you know, you're, not, you're, you're a parent, but you're also your own person still. Okay. He's gone. <laughs> I love this little guy so much, but he's very helpful right now. Okay, we're, we're just going to go out. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm currently filming in my guest room, which is also my craft room. It's not the most ideal setup, but has a door that closes and is removed from most of the chaos of my household. So we'll see where it goes for location-wise. I'm going to try a few places out, but this was the start for today. Uh, anyways, so I got to FlossTube just like watching and commenting and following Instagram a couple months ago. I had tried a few other times and I just hadn't really found, found my people that I was interested in watching and interacting with. A lot of the projects were large or expensive or not to my taste and just not my style, and so it's like, okay, like, good for you, you go, but I'm not really interested in what you're doing. So I found that really hard, and then I found some designers I was interested in, and then I found their floss tubes, and I found people mentioning them, and so I went from there. So, I uh, want to talk about my, my year, as like I said, I'm going to be on maternity leave, and I really want to get a lot of my projects done, and focus on, on crafts, and being, being my own person while still becoming a mother. So one of the things I've done is I've tried to make myself a schedule. I've mentioned briefly that I am ADHD, and schedules are not my fa my favorite thing. I struggle with them. I get I either hyper focus on a project or I do it and it disappears into the abyss for years. So I'm trying to be better about that, and I found a couple of organizational things I want to try. Um, Frizzy Lizzie on Floss Tube. She had a really good um, notions application, which I've been trying out, and it seems to be fairly good for organizing. We'll see how far along I stick with it, but she had a whole template. She went over in her own floss tube, and it was, it looked like it would work for me, so I'm trying it out. So, so far so good, and just, you know, tracking all my works in progress. And I know um, Jessie Does Things has, is the originator of the Whipgo. Uh, Whipgo does not work for me and how my brain works. What I did instead is I made myself a whip, I'm pulling it a Whipgo wheel, where I can spin a wheel and it will tell me which project to work on. So it adds like that little um, rush of randomness to keep me focused on projects I might otherwise neglect. 
And my plan is I will work on some of my main projects during the week and then I will use the whip-go wheel on other days so that way I have a balance between working on the projects that I am passionate about and then also working through the projects that I was passionate about and I just forget about because out of sight, out of mind. Like I put them away, I keep them up, I put them away and they are gone. They, they do not exist anymore. So I thought to start that off I would just kind of start with like a little whip parade so you know what I'm going into 2023 with. And so I'll start with that. Uh, I did have these three on the top I want to finish for New Year's. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, Chinook Crafter, I had mentioned it. I did not quite get there because again I have a toddler but you know, progress is progress. So this first one here is the Autumn Owl by Pigeon Coop. He's a, well, I, I want to say he was in Toronto and now he's an Ottawa Canadian designer, so I love supporting the like, Canadian designer. He does a lot of nature themed and geometric designs and I love owls, so this called for me. It was a gift with purchase, so it is not currently in release, but who knows what he'll do. And I just want to shout out to him. I love his kits, like this is at the end of the kit, like look how much floss I have left. I could almost do this project again. And yeah, so this one went, this one was stitched up really fast, it's just nice, it's geometric, it's repetitive, so I really enjoy that one for when I'm at home in the evenings and just needing to do something. So I'll finish this one as a hoop I think and display it in the fall. Uh, this one here is actually my first cross stitch project. Uh, this is from June. It's Amethyst Floral by Junebug and Darling. I got this as a Christmas gift for my sister, December 2018. Started January 6, 2019. I've got the Instagram post of me like, oh look, I got a new hobby. Yep. Uh, my goal is I'm gonna try and finish this by tomorrow. All that is left is some back stitching and some French knots, and that has been the case basically for the last three years because I. Went full steam ahead on the, on the flowers, and then I got to backstitch, and I struggled, so I put it away and forgot all about it, slash had some reversion against it. I, I'm not the biggest fan. This um this fabric is very stiff, so I'm finding it hard, and like even though I'm following the pattern and counting, it's still not lining up. So I've kind of have let it go. It doesn't have to be perfectly according to the pattern. It, as long as I get you know these like stems and the French knot leaves in, it'll be done and then I can let, let it go and move on and not have this hanging over my head still. And my last project that I want to finish for 2022 was this um, bunny sampler. It's not actually for my baby. My friends had a baby four weeks ago and this is for their baby. Uh, all I have left to do is some back stitching over here and adding the name. So that should only take me less than an hour once I get going. Um, I just, you know, again, it's hard. <laughs> and I haven't met their baby yet. We're kind of waiting until uh, it's on. Waiting for a better time because they've had some complications, but everything's good. Um, this was a free pattern in the May 2022 Cross Stitcher Magazine by Deneen Jones. Um, I'm really loving this. It was very fine. It's to stitch up. I should have done a slightly different fabric. My on my floss toss, it looked like the um, this body color did not blend into the fabric as much. However, that was you know the six strand full full skein, and now it's you know oh yeah when you do with one or two strands, it just it blends in a lot more. However, once with all the back stitching, it'll be very sweet. It's very cute. I enjoy this. So those are my goals to get finished by the end of the week and be done with them. And then I can be like, and then show those later. Um, my big project coming into 2023 is this one. It doesn't have an official name. I don't, this is almost a page finish. It's, uh, I think the uh, designer was calling it like spooky goth babe. Uh, I signed up to do a test stitch of this and got the fabric and I was working on it, it was going great, and then it just, communication just kind of disappeared, fell off, I don't know. So I was working on it, I don't have a finished picture obviously because it was a test stitch. I still like it for myself, so I'm going to finish it and I want to get that finished ASAP, just you know, in case the designer does pop up again and does want to sell the pattern or something, like so then it's done. Um, but it's going to be really cool, it's like mythological, um, fantasy, cats, you know, very much my vibe. So that is, that's my main one. That's one that, that's not actually on my go wheel. That's my, my every other day stitch because I want to get it done. It's just, um, it's 18 count with a lot of black. So it's not, it's not fast going. Like I don't have to count or think about it, but it is just so dense. Uh, this is, a, this one is on my go wheel and this is Wakanda Forever by Park Harper, Park, Park Harper. 
Hopper Bart. Um, I'm not very far on it. This was supposed to be a Father's Day gift for my partner, who is a huge Black Panther fan. Um, it's not hard. It's very geometric. It's just stitching on black is harder than I thought. So I did not get very far on it before. You know, uh, as you can see, I have fairly terrible vision. So <laughs> I can only stitch on this in a couple hours of daylight. And when you have a toddler, those couple hours of daylight, they can be real hit or miss if you get them. So that, that's one I've started. The rest of my pro projects I have kitted up, but I haven't started. So I know that for some people those don't technically count as whips. They do for me. I don't have a lot of space in my house. So they're kitted up. They're ready to go. It's a work in progress. I have moved beyond just having the pattern. Um, my first batch is like I've mentioned. I am a huge fan of Pigeon Coop Designs. So I have quite a few kits of his that I'm going to be working on. I've got I'd Rather Be Camping. I'd rather be gardening, and I'd rather be hiking. So these are all fairly quick stitches. I want to say, where does the stitch count on them? 70 by 80 stitches for the most part. So a fair bit of back stitch, but not too bad. So I would like to just get those down. I feel like they're fairly quick projects, so they're on the wheel. They'll clear off fairly fast because, you know, that's... There's smaller projects, and like I mentioned, they're geometric, um, uses a lot of negative space, and just simple colors, like beautiful color palettes, and so I'm hoping that I'll get these done and kind of hung up in frames, and, and have them, you know, feel accomplished. And this one is also by Pigeon Coop. This is the one I bought when I got the owl as the freebie. It, it's his Orca Bay design. I lived in Victoria, BC for three years, so this is a spe special for me. And, and I love the water pattern here, like it's all very geometric and gorgeous. There's options to do it as a square or round in the hoops. I'll probably do it round in the hoop, I'm just going to have to think about the pattern when I do it. Um, it is an intermediate level is what, is what he calls it, so it probably will take a little longer for me. And I'm just going to pull up the... F yeah. Like, <laughs> I, love, I love this. Oh, three threefold these blues which are gorgeous and oh, these pinks these blues these greens like he's actually left blank spaces there so you can put your own on the floss dropping but you need like this much and so it's gonna be very beautiful color yeah, it's only 13 colors so that's not as bad as I thought it's just <laughs> a lot of blue <laughs> I'm excited to do it though. I think this one will just take me a little bit longer because it's going to be a lot of like, you know, two stitches in this color switch, two stitches in this color switch to make that beautiful repeating geometric motif. But it'll be well worth it once it's done. So those are, that's my pigeon poop ones. I have a, I actually have some PDFs from him as well, but I have not kid those up so they are not counting yet. So there's that. Uh, these next three are me being, no, these next four are me being a terrible Halloween person. Uh, I had all these plans at Halloween time. I was going, you know, there were so many fun patterns coming on Halloween, and I was so excited about them, and I got all this stuff to do them, and I just made no progress because I was busy trying to finish other things. <laughs> um, I'm not going to really show because I don't have the patterns because I, I mostly work from my phone. Uh, so I'll try and pop a little image here editing. Please be kind of that, but you might also recognize them. So Tiny Modernist did a Halloween crystal ball cross stitch pattern, and it was just in three parts. You know, I had this black cat and owl, and it was really cute. And I think I just I struggled because I took so long to pick out this fabric. Oh, I don't know if it shows. It's this beautiful sparkly opal. It's a picture of this plus in the Mirage sparkle. And so I think that's going to be gorgeous. And I have the colors. I didn't go for the variegated floss. I just stuck to the DMC because the real star is this fabric. Here. So that was that. Uh, of course, I feel like everyone. Uh, this is this one here is kind of like my way of knowing if you are my people. If you did the haunted library stitch along, I'm already interested in your taste. Um, that that one really called to me, and I I got the 14 count for the, the vintage country mocha because of all the color changes for me. I want to be have space, and so I got all the colors, and I think. She was on the fourth or fifth release when I got all kitted up, and at that point I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll start when I start. And I have not started, but I want to get this done for next Halloween. I love the color palette here, and I think it's going to be gorgeous. I just need to start. 
this one again. Here, you can see beautiful Halloween colors here. This was a free stitch along on a Facebook group, uh, Snarky and Modern Crafts or Embroidery. Uh, it's by Witch's Garden Crafts, who have done a few other patterns. I love her work. She has a dark goddess stitch along right now, which I'm just kind of waiting to see um, the fir first couple of drops before I commit or not, because I'm very, I'm always very anxious about stitch alongs, if I like them or not, so I usually wait until a drop or two in before I commit, because I, I have too many things to go with on, I, and I, won't, I don't keep up anyway, so I don't see the point in start being all prepped to start when I, you know, this, this is how far I get two months later. I've got the fabric. <laughs> And the floss. So my goal is like even though I'm like oh, clearly I'm not a seasonal stitcher, my goal is to get these done and ready so I will have them done for Halloween and have Halloween direct decorations. This last one was supposed to be stitch along with a Facebook group I'm part of called the Oracle Sal. Um, it was Pumpkin Colored Autumn by Al Forest, which is one of the free patterns. Yes, and it's just like again I don't have like a nice photo of it. It's just a motifs like almost like a, I guess almost like Quaker style and it was gorgeous and then it just I didn't start it because I spent so long picking fabric and variegated floss so I just never got the chance to start but I've got a beautiful combination of different variegated floss flosses to try um I just couldn't do the shipping from um Al Forest it's like, highly expensive like the perform where I am uh, so I talked to my local uh flo little local needle workshop I guess if you're uh, embroidery marketplace and she's we went back and forth with tons and tons of photos to pick out these threads and I'm a little nervous about starting because I've never used variegated threads before but I think it will be beautiful once I get going. My other two projects, this one I also I feel bad about. This is a Chronicles of Narnia stitch along. It was a limited limited edition release that I jumped on by um oh god stitching book club I think. Uh, I know on Etsy it's like Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts, and then she's got her a different handle on like Instagram, and she has lots of beautiful book themed gra uh, stitch alongs. And this was Chronicles of Narnia, and so I jumped on it without knowing what it looked like because it was limited edition in Chronicles of Narnia, so I had to take that risk. And I didn't start this one because my local needle shop was out of um, 14 count and six, 16 count, and so I ended up getting linen, and because I panicked. And I'm scared of linen, and so I haven't started it because I've been scared of linen. But I'm, you know, everyone else seems to be searching on like 40 count and 36 count and things like that. And this is just 28 count. I, I, sh I should be a big girl this year and conquer my fear of linen. <laughs> so we'll see. And then my last one, this was a birthday gift for my sister. Hey, Michelle here, just doing my editing and found out my camera cut off the last few minutes of my, my clips. So... I don't have time to refilm for the next two, three days, and I'd rather just focus on editing and getting it out, so I'm just going to recap again. I had one last kit, which was a birthday gift from my sister, uh, Frederic the Literate, which is a very cute cat sleeping in a bookcase, but it's on Black Ida, and it will blow back stitching. So it'll probably take me forever to do and frustrate me endlessly, but I'll be very proud of it once it's done. So I'm very excited about that kit. It's on my Whipco board, and we'll see how far I get with it this year. Uh, so that is my floss tube. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with the technical glitches as I figure out how to film and edit on iMovie. I hope to do another video in about two weeks. I want to talk about uh, the stitch alongs I'm watching and maybe participating in. Uh, maybe show off some of my finished objects or, you know, fully finished objects. Fingers crossed and my mom will be coming up. So hopefully she can help me figure out some blanket stitch and hoop finishes and have to use my sewing machine a bit better. And... That is what I have planned for the next month. You know, I've got, we'll see what happens with my life. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.